Good morning, everybody. My name is Greg Donaldson. I'm the uh, National Vice President of Communications for the American Cancer Society. I want to welcome you to the National Press Club this morning. No one deserves to get cancer, but everyone deserves the right to fight it. Today, the American Cancer Society takes a step forward into uncharted territory for our organization in an unprecedented way on an issue of enormous significance for our country. For 94 years, the American Cancer Society has actively promoted awareness of prevention and early detection and the treatments for cancer. We've promoted awareness to the general public about getting screened, getting tested, and getting treatment. But today, we realize that it may be difficult for us to urge Americans to be screened if they don't have access to screening. We understand, with the help of newly published scientific data, which we'll talk about this morning, that it may be pointless to urge Americans to get treatment if they uh, don't have access to that treatment, and if that treatment isn't available to millions of Americans, to all Americans. So that's why for the American Cancer Society, it's become something of a moral imperative to do its part to promote a nationwide discussion of the need to promote access to care. And to begin that conversation today, I'd like to ask Dr. John Seffra, the National Chief Executive Officer of the American Cancer Society, to come forward and explain why this issue is important to our organization, why it is so relevant at this time, and why it's so important to all Americans. John. Thank you, Greg, <clears throat> and thank all of you uh, for being here, uh, ladies and gentlemen and members of the press. And I'd particularly like to acknowledge the presence of two individuals, Dr. Otis Brawley, who is the Chief Medical Officer-Elect of the American Cancer Society, thank you for being here, and Dr. Elmer Huerta, President-Elect of the American Cancer Society, thank you, Elmer, for being here. We, the top senior most volunteer and professional staff leadership of the American Cancer Society are here today to declare that lack of access to timely and adequate health care has become a major cancer killer in America. And the number is large and is growing of those who are suffering needlessly and dying needlessly simply because they don't have access to adequate health care. And that's why we at the American Cancer Society today announce the launch of an effort that is unprecedented in the 94-year history of our organization and indeed in the history of nonprofit patient advocacy, which is a nationwide public education campaign about the critical need to give all Americans access to adequate health care. This campaign will involve nationwide advertising, a sophisticated web component, and grassroots activities involving thousands of cancer advocates across the country. And our goal is to elevate the national discussion and debate around the need to fix a very broken health care system in America. Cancer is America's number one health concern. When the topic is cancer, people listen, and they should. But far too many Americans do not have access to cancer prevention, early detection, and treatment services that we know and have proven save lives. This campaign is about motivating people across the country to advocate for change so that everyone has access to the care that they need when they need it. The American Cancer Society has a long history of working to improve access to quality health care. Our efforts include funding groundbreaking research, emphasizing prevention and early detection, advocating for free screening and treatment for the medically underserved, and supporting tobacco control and cessation programs, among many others. And this work will certainly continue but it's simply not enough. We know that without changes in the healthcare system, we will not reach the goals that the American Cancer Society set for our nation in the early 1900s to reduce cancer death rates by 50% and cancer incidence rates by 25% by the year 2015. But we are not an organization that declares defeat in the face of a crisis. 
the Society is taking a nationwide leadership role on the access to care issue with the goal of moving the country to action and thereby saving millions of lives over time. Ladies and gentlemen, 47 million Americans are this day uninsured. They must delay or avoid treatment for cancer, and as a result, they are more likely to be diagnosed with cancer at its advanced stages, when it is less treatable, more expensive to treat, and far, far less curable. And when you factor in the underinsured, an astronomical problem becomes almost unfathomable and certainly unacceptable. Tens of millions of Americans this day labor under the misguided belief that they have adequate health insurance, only to learn otherwise when they are diagnosed with cancer or another serious illness. For too many insured, Americans, a cancer diagnosis is not only a personal health crisis, it is a prescription for financial ruin. They, the underinsured, may not be able to afford their co-pays or their premiums. They may be faced with limits on the number of doctor visits their health plan allows. Their plan may not cover all the medical costs following a cancer diagnosis. In fact, that was the case with Rena Bass of Boonville, Missouri, who is featured in our advertisements on access to care, and we'll hear from her a little later in the press conference. For thousands of the underinsured, cancer is a double tragedy, a life-threatening disease coupled with an intolerable financial burden. One in five insured families touched by cancer will use up all or almost all of their life savings fighting the disease and 100,000 families went bankrupt last year as a direct result of a diagnosis of cancer. Simply put, we don't believe you should have to fight for your life and fight for the care you need also. The public education campaign we are launching today is a nationwide call for action on this critical issue. Everyone with an interest in solving the access to care problem, the public sector, the private sector, the not-for-profit sector, and yes, the public itself, we believe needs to get engaged. In addition, a process this big must be spearheaded by elected officials who are, after all, elected to shape public policy. When a new president takes office in January of 2009, he or she will be in a unique position to advance this issue. By educating and mobilizing the public, we intend to create an environment in which the new president will be compelled to act. Now, we know from experience that public awareness is crucial to making progress against cancer. People must be educated about scientific advances if those advances are to have widespread impact. Our prior public education campaigns have done just that, resulting in widespread use of mammography and colorectal cancer screening, significant declines in tobacco use, and many other life-saving screenings and treatments. And as a result, the cancer mortality rate has been dropping about 1% a year for more than a decade now. So we know we can save lives. The question is, how can we save the most number of lives and that's by fixing the broken health care system. We hope our current efforts will also make a difference by inspiring and empowering the American public to take action that will help to solve the national crisis of lack of access to adequate health care. To share more specific information about how lack of access to health care impacts cancer outcomes and to offer more details about our public education campaign, I'd like to call upon the American Cancer Society's National Volunteer President, Dr. Richard Wendell. Rich?